Well, here we are on YouTube, uh, coming at you live from the Welp Cave here in Welp, Canada. Ryan, what's happening? <laughs> Nathan, this is, I'm excited to do this with you. We've often obviously talk to each other offline. We always say, how you doing? What's going on with each other? And to talk about what we can watch on our channel, of course. And sometimes I'm always amazed what you haven't seen. <laughs> so this is basically Nathan will be reacting to this live performance at Wembley Stadium of Queens Under Pressure. Nathan, of course, knows the song, and but he has not seen this performance. It's just a, obviously, it is a, it's a world-renowned performance, but Nathan has not seen this. It, trust me when I say, don't add us in the comments. How come he hasn't seen it? He just hasn't seen it, and uh, I just want him to experience it. So I said, let's watch it together because he's my best friend. I've seen it, of course, a few times. I go to it as a comfort food quite often. Uh, but anyway, so Nathan, uh, you haven't seen this, but you have a story that you want to share about the song you said. Yeah, so this, okay, there was two songs, Once Upon a Time, when Ryan and Nathan were little boys. Ryan was famous in my circle as, <laughs> we had a nickname for him. It was uh, MC that, Fat Chunk. No, anyway, because he would make mixes. He'd make mixtapes for everybody. But especially for me, he made me make... That's why we were best friends. Aww. Ryan provided the music, and I don't know what I provided back. But I... Uh, anyway, we... I listened to Queen, and I was introduced to Queen through you. And the two songs that you introduced me to, and it wasn't the classic songs. It wasn't the ones that everybody listened to. It was Radio Gaga hmm. and this song under pressure and both of those songs were songs that uh, every time i hear them i think of you first. because i th it's like th they they're and they're in my opinion two of the best songs that they ever wrote i think radio gaga is it has such sentimental value to me because it, it totally reminds me of my childhood yeah. oh nice but this song as well oh yeah i know there's a whole history with this song and i've heard the history oh yeah yeah it's quite a interesting getting david bowie in the studio and a little bit of the there's some tension between them and queen i know a little bit of that but that's not what latches me to the song it's still no. that like memory of my past well, so without mm -hmm. further ado i mm. present to you nathan mm. your first time watching queen live wembley stadium performing under pressure cool jacket i don't know it's an awesome jacket yeah i love it even in the 70s this is this, is, this stands out well, this is in the 70s. I think this is 80s skip. Oh, is this 80s? Okay, okay. It's a little more 80s. Sounds the same live that he does on the, the studio. It's the same. Can you imagine being at this concert? I'm 
Mark Nathan sings the part for David Bowie's part and he spells it. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah, watch for that. Yeah, watch for that. Heavier, I like it. Watching some good friends scream and let me out. Till tomorrow, guess me high up. Guess you what? People on the streets. Get it. Take it, take it, take it. High notes are hard, probably hard to do live. Oh, you gotta save your voice on the show. Yeah. Yeah, you can't do the high notes at all. Could you imagine being able to go to a Freddie Mer- to a Queen concert and yeah, and hear that live? Like to, even to this day, I'm just thinking like, we just recently went to a bunch of concerts, and there's a certain amount of you have to show a little bit more than just simply playing the song. And we did see, actually see a little bit of that from some of the concerts that where it was just like okay, they just played. But back then in the '80s, like. Freddie doing that little sing song thing with the crowd and get them like all excited. Like that would be a great concert to feel like you were a part of. And I wonder to what extent, I don't know. I'm curious about that. Like how often did performers in the eighties or the seventies or the sixties interact that much with the crowd and get the crowd part of it. That's cool. I just, I, I didn't anticipate that being something that I'd see because I, I, we've seen performers do it at concerts we've been to, but Back then it was cool. I did want to say also just to both ask the question and defend. I know it's harder to sing those high notes. I know that's just a, when you've been singing, especially if you're singing, that was in the middle of a concert. It wasn't like they're going to sing this one song. You have to prep and do all kinds of stuff to get those high notes to be able to pull those off. So I get why he didn't. But I'm also curious as to, has he ever performed it live singing those high notes? I'm just curious. Yeah. Because that, yeah, that's a, that's a like, part of the song. Step there. 
Uh, yeah, that's a fair question. It's not a criticism. Less people add us in the comments. There's such staunch queen defenders out there. Oh, we yeah. have to be careful. But I've seen a lot of stage shows, a lot of live concerts, and Freddie's human. <laughs> there, everyone's human. Oh, yeah. And, and to hit those high notes, it doesn't do a different strain on the voice. So you have to, the singer has to kind of balance what am I going to give this song? What's in the studio is one thing, but what I have to do live and and that this is the only show of the year. Like this is a concert or a tour or whatever it might be. You're right. So you got to have to gauge what you ch- So artists change songs all the time. And I think the song itself was played, I think a little bit of a lower tone than, like you said, it's heavier sounds. So the singing mm. in the lower register mm. fits more to the, the live, the live song. But that being said, we know Freddie kills the singing. We're not saying that we're just oh, saying, yeah. we just noticed that there's high parts of the studio version that we didn't hear here. So we're just wondering, Oh, and then I had another question. Yeah. Another goes with that. So that my question was, has he ever done that live, the, the high parts? And maybe it's in a smaller Probably. venue or, or some other place. Yeah. But my other question is, has he ever sang live with David Bowie? No, I think I can song? answer that. I don't think they oh, did. Okay. I, like you hinted at the beginning. I don't know the whole history. I'm not a queen nerd at all. So don't mm-hmm. add us in the comments. We're just a reaction channel. We are not an information channel. But my understanding was, I don't even know what the falling out was or what it was. There's something that I think it was even during the recording session. There was some okay. friction. There was some friction, yeah. which is understandable. Yeah. Two very strong personalities, very mm-hmm. strong artists, very creative in their own mind. So when you have these mm-hmm. two very they're about as front men as you can be <laughs> these two yeah oh yeah but the fact that they collaborated was cool i just don't know how much they got along or how much they were interested in working together so no my understanding mm. is they never performed this live together okay was, so yeah that's my understanding yeah. let me know in the comments if i'm wrong and if they did send the link but i don't think i'm wrong I, but yeah. that song was my first introduction to david bowie as well by the way yeah, yeah we needed so. more david bowie on our channel so if you join our patreon Mm. Uh, tell us who to listen to, or sorry, what song to listen to of David Bowie. We love him. We've done a few of his songs, but we've cut the catered out. We would like to have more requests given to us. And we, oh, I know what I was going to say. We also have a lot of Queen that we haven't heard. So there, yeah. we, we know most of the hits, the big ones. And, and I've got like the best of Queen. That That's the only album I own. It's, it's like a right. 32 song, whatever. But I don't know a lot of the, the more obscure ones. And it was a while back, about a year or so ago, we got a queen song that neither uh, you and I hadn't heard before. So I'd love to right. hear some of that as well. So. Yeah. We, and I feel like our reaction here, we did a stone cold, crazy reaction to uh queen's second album. I think it was Queen's second album. And, oh, and I believe what it was. Yeah, and I yeah, believe yeah. it's on our YouTube channel. So it's not blocked mm. or anything. So check out our queen reaction to their second studio album. We had a blast mm. doing that. And that was a fantastic album. We loved it. Oh yeah. That's an example yeah. of queen. We didn't know. We didn't know any song from that album. It was amazing. Mm. Okay. Thanks for watching everyone. We appreciate yes. that. Thanks everyone. Thanks for sticking around to the end and uh, we'll see you on the next one.